Welcome to Berkshire Record Office Heritage Open Day. I'm going to share with you a process used to stabilise a damaged photograph. I photographed the back and the front before starting the procedure. I'm working on clean blotting paper and my hands are freshly washed. I'm not wearing gloves because they make it difficult for me to judge the condition of the photograph. They also reduce my dexterity and they increase the risk of damaging the photograph even further. My aim is to separate the three layers and to facilitate the separation, I'm using a nebulizer, which creates a fine mist to swell the outer layers, making separation easier. I'm using leather covered weights to stop the middle layer from moving while I work around the transparent layer. When I come across a stubborn area, which is difficult to separate, I move on to another area and come at that stubborn area from another angle. The two outer layers are transparent and flexible. The middle layer is opaque and rigid. Its function is to support the outer layers. The transparent outer layers are creased and split and the opaque middle layer is cracked and breaking into pieces. This is no longer doing its job. This is because the outer layers have expanded and contracted with fluctuations in humidity. The middle layer does not have the same physical properties and thus a disharmony is created between the layers causing irreversible damage. It is essential to identify the photographic process before starting a treatment, particularly if water is involved. This photograph was stamped on the back April 1958. Using this date, I have researched what photographic processes were developed by the 1950s. I have searched the Graphic Atlas database and whittled down the process to one in particular. I believe the process is known as dye imbibition transparency, where the dye is suspended in a single gelatin binder on a plastic support. This photograph has all the characteristics of the DIT process. The colour is bright, there are no signs of fading because it has been kept in the dark, the highlights are bright with no discoloration, and the white support produces the full colour image. With patience and some manipulation, I have successfully removed the image layer without causing more damage. The gelatine binder with the suspended image is now stable. It is still creased and torn, but can now be recopied and photoshopped to create a near perfect digital copy. The gelatine layer is placed on photographic mounting board to create the colour positive image and placed in a photographic enclosure made from neutral silver safe paper. The enclosure is tied with archival tape to keep the contents secure. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or need any advice, you can contact me at my email address.